guys, thanks for coming to check out this video. We are about to set up the month of July in my bullet journal and I'm super excited because I have been wanting to go to Greece forever. So it is so much fun researching this country from my home and wishing I was there. <laughs> Let's see what we can find in Greece. So if you're new here and you haven't seen what I get up to in these books before, I'll give you a little brief overview of what it's like. And the way I always tend to start my monthly setups is by an opening cover page where I design a picture based on a place or a part of the country. And then I'll insert a person who is trying to be me. I, I say it's me in the picture. It's never actually me. Uh, but I try and insert her into the scene somehow. And so this one is no different. And I was super excited having a think about what I was going to put on the cover page. And I ended up going with my gut and my first instincts of when I picture Greece. And that is going with Santorini. Now, who doesn't love those picturesque photos and um, movies that you see surrounded by those beautiful domed blue roofs on white buildings, color everywhere, like sunshine, and I just love it. So I couldn't go past it. I had to include that on the cover page somehow. Now, when I thought about color palette for this particular theme, I decided on going for a very heavily blue focused um, palette. And this cover page is no exception. So I try to include a lot of different shades of blue in this composition. So to do that, I kind of wanted to add a cute, um, window scene so like the girl is inside her new little hotel room or little apartment and there's these gorgeous blue shutters that open out onto the views of Santorini which would just be incredible and it really inspired me to try and show this scene and how I would feel in it. Now in my mind I feel Santorini is probably one of the most famous views of Greece like when I think a lot of people think of Greece they think of this um, so Santorini itself is one of the Greek islands um, there are a few others that are really popular as well like Crete, Mykonos and Corfu but I just feel that this one's got the most unique and recognizable touches to it so I really thought it was the best way to showcase the you know beginning of this month exploring Greece. Now I had no idea how many islands there were on Greece um, or in Greece and it turns out there's more than 2,000 islands in the Greek territory so but only 170 of those are populated so it just gives you a really good idea of how much this area would be focused on the sea and the sky which brings me to what their flag actually means um, the reason there's so much blue in their flag it's representing of the Greece's sea and sky while the white is stands for the purity and struggle for freedom so freedom or death is the meaning of the flag so I thought that was interesting and that's why I kind of tried to go with the blue and white stripes on the girl's dress just trying to incorporate as much as I could into the scene um, that I learnt along the research way. Um, but something I do wish I did now that I'm thinking about is Santorini has always made me think of the movie Sisterhood of the Travelling Pants. Now, if anyone's seen that, I'm sure you loved it. Uh, I did. I absolutely love that movie. And I just always think of it when I think of Santorini. So I should have put her in jeans. That would have made so much sense. It would have stuck to my blue as well. So maybe if I could go back in time, I would put her in a blue and white striped tops and a pair of jeans. Just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> so I just realized I didn't really explain the meaning of the flag very well. So what I meant to say was that their flag consists of five blue stripes and four white stripes, which are representative of the motto, Eleftheria Ethanatos. And this is a Greek motto that means freedom or death. So there's five uh, syllables in Eleftheria and Ethanatos is four syllables and so that's where those lines come in so symbolically it's representing that and how passionate they are about freedom and when they broke away from the Ottoman rule and became independent so it's very very big meaning for Greeks so I thought it was essential to state that here in the cover page now as for what I'm doing here you have seen that I use my watercolor paper this is a hot pressed watercolor paper I do prefer hot over cold for some reason I think I just don't like too much texture on my watercolor drawings mainly because I am super detailed in what I try to create so the texture kind of throws me off sometimes I prefer that more textured look for when it's something a little more abstract or really organic shapes 
Uh, but anyway, I digress. So I'm using my watercolor paper and I'm using my gouache. But what is fun about this one is I gave myself quite a limited palette to work with. So I've only got the turquoise blue and the ultramarine deep and I'm just trying to use those and accentuate anything that's blue in the image, um, which is a lot of things. So I have definitely used it in the sea, the sky, the features of clothing, accessories, roofs, and the shutters themselves. And I could have left it here and just gone for blue and white, and that is initially what I had planned on doing, um, but then I just didn't because I wanted to keep painting because I was having so much fun. <laughs> so I added a few bits of complementary colors in the background because in the background on Santorini there are some beautiful colored houses um, and so I just wanted to include those so I just used little touches of you know pinks and yellows and reds in the background um, and then I really just couldn't stop so I started to add some shadows to add some depth and yeah I got it to a place where I was super happy with how it turned out one of the reasons I like to do these paintings on a separate piece of paper as well is because I do have these themes, these bullet journal themes for sale on my shop and I have recently thought that I might separate the covers out in case anyone wants them as separate artworks or separate covers to print out for your own bullet journal. So I do like to keep them separate and it also just holds a lot more water. Although my journal is very good for watercolour, it still doesn't handle layers and layers of water like most bullet journals just won't handle even even watercolor sketchbooks don't handle enough I think um, so I love to be able to tape it down and just know that when I'm finished it's going to be a nice flat piece of paper again one thing I found amazing when I was looking at photos of Santorini was that this place gets over two million tourists a year like the islands like Santorini and Crete and Mykonos they actually have more tourists in summertime than Greeks themselves so I found it amazing that all these photos I found were so empty there's always just like one person in them or a few people and I would just love to know what it actually looks like when there's full of tourists there obviously it might look really empty right now but that's 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 what the pandemic does but yes I would love to know if when you're actually at these islands do you get the chance to experience them almost like you're just a sole visitor in this little world of your own or does it feel a little bit hustle and bustle like does it get really really busy I would love to know so if anyone has ever been to Santorini or the Greek islands themselves um, yeah let me know do you feel a little bit is there a lot of people around or can you actually get these nice photos of just you and the scenery? And now the piece was finished and it was time to chop it up, <laughs> chop it up and put it as the cover page on the front opening spread. So I'm just cutting it down and I always like to include a Dutch door, which is where you cut the page on the right hand side as a sort of shape and then you can peek into the page behind it. So I, I like to use those on my cover pages to separate them out. It's really easy to find the start of the month that way. Um, so I'm just cutting around the shutter and sticking it in. I also like to include the title of the month somewhere on the piece. And this one was a lot easier to include in the, the piece this time. So I found at the base of the windowsill, there was this blank space that just was beckoning for the title to go there. So I put like a little, like a sign or a little badge that's on the edge of the windowsill and I wrote the name July in there. And here's our finished beautifully blue cover page. The last few months I've been doing some tabs in my monthly setups. So I create different shaped tabs down the edge to flick to each of the pages. Um, I found it really helpful to find the right thing you're working on. And it also just adds a little bit of extra interest as well from that cover page. So originally I'd had the idea that I wanted to include a typically Greek pattern down the side. Um, in using a blue texter, I was going to do what they call a meander, which is the Greek key pattern. And you would have definitely seen this pattern before. It's on a lot of Greek pottery and ancient Greek art. Um, it's basically one continuous line that goes in right angles and sort of curves around itself or is just a running pattern, decorative pattern that's all very square um, with one continuous line. So I thought that would be really cool to include, but in the end, I found a washi tape that I had as well that just, I just couldn't go past it. It had flecks of gold in it, and we all know how obsessed I am with gold, and I think it just added a lot more 
um, vibrance to the page instead. So although I had this grand idea of doing the pattern, in the end I just couldn't bear to not use this perfectly coloured washi tape. <laughs> so I've used that down the edge on each divider as I go through and each divider I've just made a little bit longer so I think it's like four grid sections longer each time instead of actually cutting the individual tabs down if you know what I mean I hope that it makes sense okay so getting started on my calendar page for this month I decided to focus this one on the national animal which is what I normally do on each month and this one was super fun. The national animal for Greece is the dolphin. And if you've been with me a while and you happen to see a video probably a year ago, um, I actually realized that my spirit animal is a dolphin. So I felt very um, connected to this one and I couldn't wait to illustrate a dolphin. And one of the ways I wanted to do that was trying to include um, some of Greek some of the Greek mythology out there and so with this one it worked perfectly that Aphrodite is actually known to be always illustrated with a dolphin and so she was just perfect to put on this spread so the dolphin itself represents or symbolizes compassion hope and the good side of the sea to Greeks and Aphrodite the goddess um, is actually widely worshipped as the goddess of the sea and of seafaring so I was very happy to be able to include one of the Greek goddesses in and I try and incorporate them a bit throughout this setup as you'll soon see um, so to illustrate her I started with a position of how the dolphin would be and then I worked her body to where it would be sitting if she was traveling on top of the dolphin itself and so it became this quite majestic position I'm really happy with how that turned out and I tried to show that the hair was long and golden and just flowing all through the sea she might be underwater in this she might not in my mind she kind of is um, but yeah I just really like how it came out very like those old world statues and very um, majestic in terms of the colors for this one I decided to keep it very simple and just use my gold as the accent color and then everything else in black with a touch of blue once I was happy with the illustration side of it, I added a little bubble up in the top right where I track my YouTube growth. And this time it will be quite an exciting month for me because I am very close to hitting the 20K mark, which I'm very excited about. Um, if you want to help me get there, feel free to subscribe to the channel for more of my content. And keep your eyes peeled because in a few weeks time, I will be doing a, a special giveaway of some sort to celebrate that reaching that milestone. So stay tuned for that one if you're interested. Um, and then I'm moving on to the calendar side of this spread where I am writing the title of July in a traditionally Greek style of font. And I'm using that meander pattern that I told you about earlier on the edges just to try and get it in there somewhere. <laughs> um, and then this time I thought I would mix it up and actually do a vertical calendar this month. Um, it does always bother me that it goes across the two pages and it interrupts my um, art space. <laughs> um, so I did this one vertically and it actually seems to work really well because it gives me that full spread, that full side page to work on. And then I can still include all my important dates and birthdays that I need to remember on this side of the page. So it fills the space nicely and it, it keeps it practical but pretty. And here, as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to include a bit more blue in this, in this page and I thought it would be nice to add a little touch of colour in the dolphin in this same blue. So what I'm doing here is a thing that I do often if I want to keep the same colour as the markers but I don't want a harsh line or a really full bold colour in there. I'll just wet it with a little bit of water on a plate and get some of the marker onto there and then just use a paintbrush to paint it onto the pages. And you just have to work fast but it really does a great effect of just giving you a little touch of colour without going too heavy. So there you have the finished calendar page with our very majestic Aphrodite and her dolphin friend. Okay, moving on to the next spread. Uh, the next page I'm working on is my needs and wants page. And this is a page I include each month to keep track of 
purchases that I need to make, whether they be needs or wants. I like to separate them out to help me with spending. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, um, I found this a really handy tool. Um, and you'll see that I, in the beginning, was filling it out a lot. Now it's getting really minimal that I fill it out because I don't know, I just naturally sort of learnt not to spend money on things I don't need. So I still like to keep this spread in here in case I relapse. We don't want that to happen. So here I'm going to focus on a very cool ancient belief known as the evil eye or the Greek evil eye. Now you may have noticed this on my nails this time around because I really liked the symbolism of it and what it means. So this is an ancient belief that an evil eye could curse upon someone and it causes bad things to happen to that individual. So by using this evil eye or known as Mati, it's a pendant that can be protecting people from that evil eye and yeah, you will be safe from that curse happening to you. It's actually been around since the sixth century BC. Um, so a very long time and it, you'll find it on a lot of the artisan crafts and there's pendants and trinkets and on pottery. So it's a really common symbol that you'll find in Greece. Um, so I just really liked it and I thought it would be perfect for this needs and wants page. I also had some leftover paint samples from my last setup and when I did my whales one I painted a little puffin bird on a um, little paint sample from Bunnings and I had a couple left over and there was this beautiful blue one and I thought that was a good base and I really enjoyed painting on it last time so I thought I would do the same again this time and paint the evil eye on that. Another little quirky fact I found out about Greece is that they are the leading producer of sea sponges. Um, and especially on Kalimnos Island, it's famous for producing sea sponges. So I thought to give hail to that, I would use a sea sponge to create a bit of a texture on the outside of this page. Um, can't say that I'm in love with the effect, um, but I actually love sea sponges. There's something about them that just amaze me, that this thing you can wet and it goes spongy and then you can dry and it becomes like solid rock. There's just something really cool about it. Um, so I had one lying around. I thought I would use it as a little bit of texturizing and just a little ode to the sea sponges of Greece. I actually remember my mum painting the walls in our house with a sponge effect. Um, it just was definitely a thing back in the 90s maybe, um, but it just made me think of that when I was doing these effects on the pages. So yeah, a little shout out to anyone who's ever done sponging on their walls. <laughs> Now, because that side of the page was incredibly bold with that bright eye right in the center there, I thought I would try and keep the color palette on this page very minimal again. So I'm just using my blue Micron fine liner to illustrate some of the foods famous from Greece. So normally I like to keep this spot on my meal planner to be a representation of the national dish. Now the national dish for Greece is oh, one of my favorite meals, moussaka. And I remember my mum making this again years and years ago when I used to live at home um, and it was just incredibly delicious. But once again, it's not really great to draw. It just, it doesn't give me much inspiration when I look at a moussaka, I don't really feel like drawing it. So I decided to go for a couple of different um, famous things that you would find in Greece that they uh, love to eat over there and that I also love to eat myself. So firstly, I went to the national drink of Greece which is called Ouzo and if you want to say cheers you say Stin Igiamas or just Giamas which I was surprised at because on my big fat Greek wedding which if you haven't seen the movie you must see it one of my favorites again love that movie I'm always saying quotes from it for some reason um, but yeah in this movie they whenever they take shots of Ouzo they say Whoopa! Um, but I found out that taking it as a shot is actually not the most common way to drink ouzo. It's usually served chilled with ice and water and it's always drank while having a nibble, which suits me just fine. Um, so it's an aniseed flavored liquor and I've only just recently tried it and I must say I love it, but I was a fan of Sambuca before, which has that really strong aniseed flavor. So I kind of knew that I would love it myself. Um, but I'm still not a pro at drinking it chilled over ice. Now, food-wise, there were so many beautiful foods to choose from for Greece. Um, I'm definitely a fan of many of the dishes, so I chose to do some that I both enjoy eating and thought would be fun to draw. So I've ended up with an arrangement of olives, which are my personal favorite, souvlaki, which is so fun to say and super tasty to eat, 
um, octopus, which I would definitely be keen to try in the authentic Greek style, and dolmades. Now, dolmades I remember trying many years ago and didn't really enjoy them, but I'm a firm believer that if you don't try the food one once in the actual country or two from somebody who's from there, then it doesn't really count. So I'll definitely try them again. I tried them from Coles, so that definitely does not count. So I will for sure be trying these again when I get to Greece eventually. <laughs> And now we are moving on to my next page, which is always my favorite page to work on. This is my mind map page, which is basically a brain dump area where I write things that don't have a particular place in my journal setups. Um, it's somewhere that I can keep notes and have a reference of in my journal every month. Um, I also tend to use it as an ideas page if I have ideas and they'll just expand and expand. So I use this page for that. Um, and I, use, I usually like to focus on a either famous person from the country itself um, or even just someone authentic from that country. So this time it was a little bit different because I wanted to still do a lot of Greek goddesses. Um, so this one I decided to choose Athena, the goddess of wisdom. Well, she's also considered the goddess of a lot of things like her strategic skill in warfare and then crafts and art skills. So kind of a broad thing to be a goddess of, I think. Um, now, I don't know very much about mythology at all. I just remember doing a lot of projects in school, but that is going way too far back in my brain to remember anything concrete. Um, so Athena, I will give you a breakdown of who she is meant to be. So Athena was born from Zeus after he experienced an enormous headache and she sprang fully grown and in armor from his forehead, which I found extremely interesting. Like that's what I love about these myths. They're so, so far fetched. <laughs> um, but obviously there's a lot of belief to them and strong ties in history um i think it's really cool if that did happen but i just thought i'd mention that it sounded really funny that she sprung fully grown clothed in armor from his forehead uh moving on she was known for protecting civilized life and she was the goddess of the city especially athens so athens was named after her now what's interesting is some sources say that she was very compassionate and very generous but then there's other references and other myths about her involvement with arachne which definitely don't seem to sound very compassionate um she was so Athena was a weaver and a very skilled weaver. Um, and then Athena, who was a human weaver, decided to challenge her to a tapestry weaving. And they both weaved a tapestry and one was representing the gods majestically, which is Athena's. And then Arachne's was depicting them not in the best light. And apparently Athena got so angry that she turned Arachne into a spider, hence the name Arachnid, and that all came from there. So another very unusual story about how these things come about. Like it's it's really quite bizarre. I'd love to learn more about these myths um, because yeah, I just don't know where they originated from and why they, why they are so, um, you know, is there any evidence of this stuff? I'm, I'm interested. So that tale also tells us why spiders spin webs because they're from the weaving, you know, Arachne was a great weaver and so was Athena. Um, and also warns us not to place ourselves on equal level with the gods because Athena got so angry that Arachne's skill was incredible, etc. So yeah, just warning. Um, ap apparently Athena also invented the flute but never played it. I found that interesting because I learnt the flute at high school. I also don't play it anymore. So that's a little bit of a background on who Athena is. Obviously, please do your own research if you're really interested because it's very hard to find the exact um, description of these gods and these myths. Um, so yeah, I decided to, because I didn't know how to draw Athena, she's a mythical being, so there's no accurate references of what she looked like. I thought it would be cool to try and entwine her with a famous Greek actress. So I have chosen probably Greek's most best known or most well-known Greek actress, and that is Irene Pappas. Now, as you can see, Irene Pappas is very beautiful. She's still alive. She's 94 years old right now. What was interesting though, is that her looks 
have always been likened to the beauty of ancient Greece. Um, so her chalky white skin, long black hair, dark brown eyes, thick arched eyebrows and her straight nose make Pappas appear as the quintessential idea of Greek beauty. Um, so I thought she was perfect to illustrate as a god, um, seen as they've already likened her to the picture of perfection anyway. And often there was photos of her next to some of the old statues of the gods and representing that beauty. So yeah, it was definitely a perfect choice to put to pair with that goddess Athena. So I chose to use an image of Irene uh, from her younger years and I've just done it in black and white because I have no color reference and I also just thought it would look nice having that contrast between the color of the flowers which I'm about to do and the gold helmet. So the reason I've got her in this helmet is because that's traditionally what Athena was always um, carved in in statues and artworks. Um, she would always have this Greek helmet on but then I thought it would be cool to include Greece's national flower here in place of where that, uh, oof, I don't even know what it's called, the little brush that goes on top of the helmet. It's definitely not a brush, but that's what I'm gonna call it. So in place of the brush area, I thought I would put in the national flower, which is bear's breeches, or the correct terminology is the acanthus mollus. And it's this beautiful flower that has so many petals that fall off it and it goes straight up in the air and then yeah, has these beautiful purpley reddish toned leaves that um, or petals that just fall away from it. So I thought it would be pretty cool to use them on the helmet instead of just doing the traditional helmet look um, because it's certainly, there's nothing traditional about this art piece at all. So I thought why not go all out? And yeah, I've always liked to include the national flower in these pages. It's just become a nice feature and it always challenges me to how I'm going to include it and entwine it into the illustration. Um, so that's something I really like to do. I like to do that in my setups, just challenge myself to add, um, you know, a little piece of different information and try and illustrate that in the setup. Um, so yeah, and I'm using my Prismacolor pencils for most of this drawing and then adding the feature gold that I love to do. I really enjoyed using the gold on the helmet because I was able to do some foliage design from that bear's breeches across the helmet, which I just think added a little bit more detail and intricacy to the spread, which yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, and then just using Pigma Microns as the hair and the base for the helmet. Um, and then this was my mind map completed. So then I just added a title to this spread, the mind map page, and used it in a nice purple color to tie in that color across the spread. Onto the next page, which is my goodliness page. Now this is where I keep my habit trackers, where I track things like um, water intake and health and good habits like exercise and flossing and watering plants, etc. Um, so I do like to theme this one about something quite positive about the country that I find. And with this one, it was quite clear to me that I had to talk about the Olympics. So the Olympic games began over 2,700 years ago in Olympia in Southwest Greece. So starting in 776 BC is when the first Olympic games took place and Every four years after that, 50,000 people would come and watch and take part. And the ancient games were actually also a religious festival held in honor of Zeus, the king of the gods. So, wow, that is some serious history right there. So our current games that we still have, um, which we call the modern Olympic games, was literally reinvented from these ancient games. And those Olympics started in 1896. And what's really interesting is that the stadium where the original ancient games were held um, was actually in the same spot as the current stadium that's there still to this day in Athens, Greece. Um, so that stadium is called Panathenaic Stadium. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, and to illustrate that, I didn't really know how to explore such a large stadium. Now this stadium is built completely out of marble, which makes so much sense because I know how much the Greeks love marble. Um, and there's these awesome statues at the end of each side of the stadium. They're double headed, so they face both ways. I can't actually figure out who they are of. I'm assuming they're maybe 
Greek gods of some sort. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would illustrate those in this drawing because it is, you know, they're all made of marble, which is very representative of the stadium itself. And it just holds a little bit more interest for me. I love drawing um, faces and people. So, and I actually love drawing statues, which is something I never would have never would have attempted drawing a statue if it wasn't for these setups. So I have learned something that I really love to do, which is drawing other people's statues. Um, so I'm just using my Pigma Micron to illustrate that and sort of adding ties into the Olympic Stadium itself through some lines in the back that are representative of the actual stadium itself, the horseshoe shape, and then the carved marble monolith that actually holds the winners from all the Olympics dating way back to that 776 BC Olympics that was held. Um, so that's where I put my trackers. I thought that would be a cool way to tie that in. And then on the statue itself, I wanted to include a quote that I found during the research that really just struck a chord with me. I think it's a beautiful quote. It's an ancient Greek proverb and it says, a society grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they shall never sit in which I think is just a really nice concept um, and idea because it means that uh, it kind of makes me think of the whole environment thing that we're going through right now. You know, we have to take the best care of this planet right now so that our children and grandchildren can live on and have a better place to live on this earth. So I just really was touched by that saying and I thought it would be nice to include here right on my goodliness tracker. I actually really loved this font that I did for the goodliness. It's based on traditional Greek lettering. And I just think it really helped to make this spread feel more Greece-like. Um, it just gave me that feeling more. And then I felt it needed some color. So I added in some Prismacolor pencil to show that. And then just adding a little bit of contrast to the page because it felt a little bit blank to me. Uh, and then she was done. This page is finished and we can move on to the final page of this setup, which is my week one spread. And this page, I felt I could not go past this amazing structure that I always think of when I think of visiting Greece one day, and that is the Parthenon. One of the references in My Big Fat Greek Wedding was that her house was modeled on the Parthenon and I always remember that. So if you're not familiar with the Parthenon, it's an ancient temple, um, a former temple that's now kind of just ruins, uh, but it was built on the Acropolis in Athens and it's dedicated to the goddess Athena, which we illustrated before. Construction on this amazing place began in 447 BC and then it went on to take nine years of building to get this finished and even then it's it still was decorated from then on until about 432 BC. The sheer size of this and just the architecture just amazes me and I can't wait to see this in real life one day. Um, I'm just fascinated by how on earth people managed to create these things. Um, I've seen the Pantheon in Italy and it also blew my mind and just, I just don't understand how men can create this structure. That's why I'm kind of leaning towards gods do exist or have existed in the past. It's just crazy. Anyway, I just felt this one needed to go in my very first setup for the weeks um, of July. And by including it like this, going across the top of the page, I was able to really illustrate the sheer size of it and try and get a little bit of detail. Although I wouldn't call this detail. I did it very scratchily and very sketchy. Um, and I'm happy with how it turned out because I think it would have taken me, you know, hours and hours if I tried to do this accurately. So yeah, it was a little bit of a guesstimation, but it's just trying to show the essence of the Parthenon across this page. Um, and then I'm just using a texter or a marker in the same blue that's in that washi tape, um, keeping with that whole blue, gold and black theme that we've got going on. And then just the first week is only four days. So I thought I would use the um, Roman numerals which I stupidly thought were the same as the Greek numerals. And then when I Googled it just now, they're not. I should have looked into that a little bit harder and seen that I could have done four, like four icons that were actually Greek in history. But I didn't and I might change that if it annoys me too much. Um, 
hope it doesn't offend any Greeks out there. I do apologize. Um, but yeah, it was really just to add that little bit of difference to this page rather than using our standard English numerals. Um, so this is the final page for this setup and I'm still not finished with my Greek inspiration. I've got more to come next week in the video for my weekly spreads. So come back if you'd like to see those on the channel. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And if you click the bell, it'll keep you notified of when I upload. And I'll just quickly take this opportunity to say thank you to my newest patrons who have really helped me out by signing up to my Patreon channel. Um, details for it are down below, but those newest patrons are ZS Zam, Lisa VW, Gerlind M, Kate S, and Natira G. So welcome and thank you for coming on board. And also in next week's video, I always offer the three choices that I choose from my special country jars. Um, and then you guys can help me vote on the next month's setup. So yeah, come back if you want to know which ones are up for grabs and then you can help me out by choosing your favorite of the three. So this year is officially flying by and I hope you enjoyed watching me set up my first month in this brand new journal. If you missed on how I set up the first pages of this journal, I uploaded that a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that's my last video on the channel if you want to check that out. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I will see you again very soon. Bye bye.